Hi everybody, I'm Eric Bolvin. I got a new camera, I got a new house. Got the same cat or Stevie. He's not being very cooperative today. Say hi Stevie, there he is. He's a good boy, he's eight years old now. All right, Stevie, well there he is. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about the seven minute warm up. And you can go to my website, bolvinmusic.com and uh, you can download a sheet for this. There's no actual like printed notes for it, but see Stevie, uh, there is a worksheet uh, that you can print out and that'll help you uh, remember what to do. All right, now I came up with this one day. I was uh, doing a gig up in Oakland. I live about 45 minutes away and uh, it was supposed to start at four and then they called and said it starts at two. So I got in the car and uh, I hadn't warmed up so I had to come up with something. So I kind of came up with some of these uh, ideas on the way to that gig and it, it worked for me. Um, another thing is I, I had a student once and and I, you know, I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm trying to find my embouchure. So uh, I kind of learned from that and I came up with some of these ideas to help you find your embouchure because I think that's important. And um, none of this stuff is, you know, I don't know if I, I didn't really invent any of this stuff and, and I'm, I'll try to tell you where I've seen other people do some of these things that I'm going to show you. Uh, nothing is new in trumpet. It's just how we rearrange and reformulate ideas and how you, you know, use them in your approach to practice. So none of this stuff is really new. Now if you've seen any of my videos, you know I do this exercise called haw to breathing. I'm saying now I'm saying haw, haw. So just say that a couple times and uh, Hole. That really gets everything opened up and you can breathe in very relaxed. Okay, so we'll go like this. Hole two. And that's your tongue. Now, what we're going to do with this is when you breathe out, you want to... I'm going to talk about keeping your corners engaged. I don't like to use the word tight or tension when I'm talking about playing trumpet. So... What you want to do is just take your mouthpiece and put it on your chops and blow just a little bit and you'll feel like all this become more engaged. That's what I mean by corners engaged. So when we breathe in, relax, and when you breathe out, be conscious of how your corners are engaged, but your corners should be engaged when you're blowing out. When we blow out for the first couple times, we're just gonna let the air just almost like just escape. We're not even blowing, just let it out. So like this. three things that I'm going to be conscious of. I'm not going to try to change anything. I just want to be conscious of these things. The corners being engaged. The position of the tongue. The tongue arch in the front of the mouth. And the abdominal support and engagement that I get down here. Alright, so feel what's going on in your body. Okay, if you watch any of my other videos, I'm, I'm big on awareness. So, becoming aware of the things that are necessary to play the trumpet will give you better control of, over those things, right? So we're going to be aware of things. I'm not telling you to do anything. Just pay attention to what's going on. All right, let's try that one more time. I'm barely letting the air out, just barely letting it out. But as we're going to find out, you don't need much more than that to get a sound out of a trumpet. And that's key to getting warmed up, is to find that efficiency. All right, now, we've done that a couple times. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to increase the blow. And when you increase the blow, do it very gradually, and you want to sizzle the air, okay? Focus your air and sizzle it. And while this is happening, pay attention 
to the three things, your corners, your tongue, and your abdominals and see what happens, like this. Hear that sizzle? All right, now what happened? Let's do it again. This time really feel what's going on here, feel what's going on with your tongue, feel what's going on down here. All right, I'm pushing that air out pretty good there. But what happens is the corners become more engaged. And this is necessary when you're blowing harder and when you're pushing more air, that this has to be more engaged in order to you know, hold the embouchure together. There shouldn't be any firmness or tension here. This should be loose and that's where the air is coming out. Now the tongue, you may have felt that it kind of arches forward. And that's how we get that sizzle. The more air we put on it, the tongue arches more and focuses that airstream, all right? And the abdominals become more engaged. We're pushing a little more down there. So you do that like three times. Now, the third thing we're gonna do is what I call three second notes. And the purpose of this is to get a relaxed feeling going when, to, for breathing while you're actually playing in rhythm. So your whole body has to be in rhythm with your breathing and consequently the, the music that you're playing. So I'm gonna hold a note, I'm just blow very easy for three, and then I'm gonna breathe in on the fourth beat like this. So one, two, three. Okay, now what's important here, and you may have noticed that if you if you start feeling like you're backed up, like you're tight, okay, um, that's why we got to practice this and get better at it, so that you can do this. I could do it all day long. You want to be able to do it ten times in a row without feeling like you're backed up. And here's why you will feel that way: because you're not utilizing your full air. Your, your full lung, it's, it's not so much you're like using the lungs, but when, when you breathe up here, all right, you'll start to feel tense. Okay, try this, say he, and then breathe out, go like this. That's not how to breathe on trumpet. And if you do that, then you're gonna feel this backed up thing. I've read people talk about stale air, and this is what stale air is. It's not really stale air, it's tension, okay? So, ho. Now, I'm blowing out very little air, but I'm breathing in a lot of air. Where does all the air go? I don't really know. But the fact is that I can do it and not feel backed up. So every day you do this, you should strive and, and be very relaxed and you'll notice how that backed up, kind of tense, I need like to empty all my air out, that feeling is gonna go away. And when it does go away, you'll be much more relaxed in your breathing. Okay, so we've done nothing with the mouthpiece yet and I should also remind you that we're not trying to buzz here. Okay, and it's not that I don't like buzzing. Buzzing works for some people. This is not about buzzing. Now, sometimes you might get a little buzz going. That's okay, because that means your lips are close enough together to play the trumpet. All right, so it's not a bad thing, but don't try to buzz when you're doing this. All right, now, we're gonna do the same thing with the mouthpiece. So the first thing we're gonna do is just blow a very easy, the easiest air, just let the air out. For about 20 seconds is all you need to do. The leg goes. Now 
Then I do this like two times. And then I'm ready to do it where I'm going to increase the blow as much as I can. Okay? Be conscious of what's happening. Don't try to do anything except increase the blow. Now, you heard some sizzle and y'all heard a little buzz in there. That's okay. That's okay. I don't want to buzz. And, and so I back off a little bit when I get the buzz. What I'm trying to do is get as much air sizzling and focused as possible. So let's try this again and get that air really focused. So then you do that like three times. We're going to do the three second notes now on the mouthpiece. All right, same thing, but now we have the mouthpiece. So here I go. One, two. Okay, so do that like 10 times and see how you feel. And uh, each day it'll get better for you. All right, try to just maintain that relaxed feeling and you'll be able to breathe in, breathe out, and it'll all work for you. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is, takes a little more coordination and we're gonna use the lead pipe of the trumpet. Okay, so um, take off your tuning slide. Now, um, I hold the trumpet in my right hand, the mouthpiece in my left hand. Um, maybe you've seen Greg Spence, he does this on one of his videos. He's got a lot of nice uh, videos on trumpet, a lot of things about air and stuff. And, uh, you know, he didn't invent this, I didn't invent this. You know, people have been doing this thing for centuries. Well, maybe not centuries, but decades. And. So, like I said, none, you know, none of this stuff is new. It's just how we reorder it and reorganize it, and you know, everybody's approach is a little bit different. And you know, every student's a little bit different. Some of this stuff may work for you; it may not. You know, just try it out and see. And you know, this doesn't have to be a warm-up either. You could use this as an exercise in the middle of your practice session. It doesn't have to be a warm-up. All right. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow this very easy. Uh, stream of air and then I'm going to put this on. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find the minimum amount of effort that is needed to produce a sound. Now when I first get a sound to come out it may not be focused. Okay so what I want to do is I want to focus the air at that point and, and get the, the sizzle to happen through the pipe and get the note to be centered and to make it sound kind of reedy. And once I can do that, then what I want to do is I want to retain that feeling, that position, because it's all a position. Your tongue is in a position, your corners are in a position, your abdominals are in a position. I'm not saying I want to, I want to be tense in that position, but that's the position I want to come back to. So when I, I come back to the next note, I'm, I'm more in focus on it. So I'm going to intentionally come at it kind of out of focus at first. So here we go. few times until I find that spot. I'm barely even blowing, but I'm getting the sound out. Okay, notice there's no buzz, all right? But when you put the thing together, 
than that, you know, the resistance is created. And so the vibration, I prefer to think of it, you know, as vibration, that's when it takes place. Okay, now I'm gonna do some three second notes on the lead pipe. I may speed up a little bit. Sometimes it's good to speed up a little bit, get some different tempos going. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to get that breathing in rhythm with the music that we're gonna be playing. So I'm just breathing in through my corners, trying to keep everything just very still and calm and breathe, blow. And, and I should also mention when you do your three count or three second notes, you want to breathe in and breathe out in one smooth motion. This is very important though. So. It's almost like I'm blowing out before I even finish breathing in. So now we're going to try to play some different notes on the horn. And um, once again, when you first hit the note, you may not be right on, on the pitch of it. It may be out of center, out of focus. So then you want to focus that note, and then on the next time, get it in focus. Um, and so you do each note a few times until you can you know, get that air going right, get everything right, and then the note will pop out. Um, we're going to start with low C. And, and uh, I think it's Pop McLaugh Pops. McLaughlin talks about you know, notes being further away from you. And once again, I don't think he learned, you know, he didn't invent that, he got it from Don Jacoby. But, you know, the C just drops out of the horn. So like this. Now, I did that on purpose, so, you know, the first one was really badly off. So, but I brought it up, and then the second one was a little shaky, and then by the third one, it was on. So, this is how, you know, you learn to do it, okay? So, I'm kind of doing this on purpose to show you how you might sound at first when you're trying this. Okay, now, G, five feet away. Now, what did you hear there? The first one was kind of loud. Uh, then I started backing it up and focused my air, sizzled it a little bit more. By the third one, I was barely even blowing, but I still got a G to come out. So, you know, this is another thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to get things focused, so we're, you know, not using a lot of energy to get the note. All right, so continuing up, we're going to go for the C, and that'd be like 10 feet away. And then the E, 15 feet, 20 feet for the G, and then maybe we'll get the high C out of this thing. All right, so here we go. Let's see. So we got the G pretty good, and uh, you know that's not necessarily how you're going to end up playing a trumpet, but um, this helps you get everything working together. Remember the corners, the engagement of the corners, your tongue arch, your abdominal air. Okay, that's all I'm doing to get the notes. All right, well let's try for high C and see what happens.
All right, so you can do this without any buzz at all. I'm, I'm once again not against buzzing, but uh, this is a completely different way of playing the trumpet. And of course there's a vibration when you put everything together. All right, so now I'm gonna do some three second notes on the trumpet and uh, pick a different note every day. Some days G, always pick a note between G and C. Don't go too high or too low with this. That's why I call the seven minute warm up. Now that's not a complete routine of practice for the trumpet, obviously, but it's something to get you started. And then when you go, you know, go to whatever you do next, you know, whatever you do, tonguing, flexibility, I mean, I consider that practice. So, I mean, warming up, you know, shouldn't take more than seven minutes and then, then you're into practicing, okay? So, check out the website. We got a lot of good books for trumpet, tongue level and air. We got the Modern Jazz Trumpet Method, and the next book out is called the Bebop Range Book. And if you have any questions or anything, send me a video, or I mean, uh, send me an email, or you can send me a video on uh, YouTube. And I look forward to chatting with some of you guys later. All right, thanks.